these are dull. Hey, long care type people. I've been wanting to do a video on this all American sharpener for lawnmower blades here for a little bit. I've had it for, I think, almost two months. I've been wanting one for a long time. I've uh, been using it quite a bit, and it is awesome. This one is the model 5005. I know they make a few other models. I'm not sure exactly how they compare. Maybe as far as the adjustment on the angle, uh, you'd have to do that research yourself. But I can say this one does everything I need it to do for sharpening any kind of blade, basically. Full disclosure, disclaimer here, I did not purchase this. Uh, I've wanted one since I found out they existed for a few months. Um, actually, I did win this one in a giveaway put on by Richie at Plemons Lawn Care. Uh, I will link his channel below. I can't thank him enough. It's awesome he did the giveaway. I want to thank All American Sharpener as well for donating this to his giveaway. It has helped me out tremendously. I really appreciate it. I'll go over a few things before we actually put this into action. Uh, I like to keep on hand. It's the cheap $5, $7 um, plastic balancer. It gets blades really close to perfect. Uh, of course, you need a four and a half inch grinder. Uh, keep a scraper. Scrape all the grass off the blades before sharpening and balancing. An adjustable wrench, and of course your blades. Now your wrench is needed a couple places on this device. Here you have the receiver for the stud that mounts onto the grinder. Uh, of course you thread this in and you did index it. I'll show that when we actually start cutting on the blade, but you get this in the right position, snug up this lock nut. It's important to get that tight because it does work loose if you don't. And also this is the stud. I think there's a couple of them that come with the kit for different threads for different grinders, but you thread this stud into the threaded area of your grinder where your side handle normally would mount, thread it in there, and there's a lock nut. You tighten that up as well. So as far as another adjustment on this jig, there's a lock nut on the bottom. When you loosen that, you're able to change the actual grind angle of the blade. You loosen it up here on the bottom, rotate this around. Uh, I found on most commercial blades, like we're gonna sharpen here, uh, 30 degrees is matches up with the factory grind. Uh, I did sharpen a couple blades for my dad on his um, residential riding mower today and I had to change that quite a bit to match the factory grind because for some reason the blades had some sort of twist to them. So here you can see the actual clamping mechanism. The blade's going to sit in here and you just tighten this handle and it holds your blade in place. Uh, usually when I put them in there, I index them. The mounting hole for the blade will, you want this tensioning screw right in the middle of the hole, and that way you have it centered for more consistency. As far as the operation, it's pretty simple to understand. It's a simple device, but it does such a great job. Uh, there's two uh, hinged portions to this jig arm where your grinder mounts. And then once it's put into place, it moves consistently, keeping your blade angle consistent, which is super important on your lawnmower blade sharpening. As far as mounting options, uh, there's a few available. I chose to just drill a couple holes in this collapsible bench and permanently mount it on there. Uh, I like to do my sharpening of blades outside. I don't like all the metal shavings and dust inside my garage. Uh, I've seen some people, if you have a flat top rail open trailer, um, you can mount it on the trailer, which is a cool idea. Uh, my trailer does sit outside all the time, so I didn't know how well this would hold up as far as finish and corrosion, and I don't sharpen blades in the field anyway, so this is a good option for me. I can fold up this collapsible workbench and hang it on the garage wall, and it's out of the way. Uh, also, uh, if you don't put any bolts in this mounting bracket, you can just clamp this in your vise on your workbench in a pinch and it works just great that way too. I did that at first but I didn't want to grind inside my garage so 
I ended up doing it this way. So once you've got the stud mounted in your grinder, the lock nut tightened down, once you're ready to grind, it's as simple as sliding the stud into the jig arm here. And you'll notice you have free movement here once the blade's mounted in the jig. Uh, it is important to hold the grinder to the right because if you're just going straight up the blade, I found that it, without noticing, it'll walk out. So you just hold light pressure to the right as you're grinding. And I've had good luck with that technique. I like to give the blades a quick scrape. Get any major buildup off before we sharpen them. And we're going to mount them, mount the blade in the jig. It's as simple as centering the screw and mill the blade. And guys, I already have this angle set up. I know these work very well at 30 degrees, so we shouldn't need to make an adjustment. So now it's as easy as. Sliding the pivot stud into the jig. We're going to go ahead and fire this up. And it's a good idea. I already have this set up and it should be pretty close. It's a good idea as far as your alignment, uh, the center of your grinder should be right in the center of your grind on the blade. Like I said, this one's already set up. You want to hold slight right pressure as you're grinding. And you make that adjustment right here on this lock nut so we're gonna make a pass or two and see if our grinds in the right spot as you can see it perfectly took off an even amount of material across the surface of this grind so we're ready to go we'll go ahead and grind it So now we're just going to give it a quick check. It's very sharp. We just about have a burr on the back side. I like to sharpen it until we just have a burr and then I clean it up on the back when taking the blade out of the jig. So now it's as easy loosening the lock handle, turning the blade over, centering it up on the lock screw, tighten it up. putting your grinder back in the jig and grinding the other side.
One thing I didn't mention earlier was I like to use a flapper wheel instead of a grinding wheel. Uh, I found this, I want to say it's 36 grit. 36, it's, it cuts pretty quickly, but you can see I can hold my hand on it and not burn my hand. A grinding wheel would make this red hot and the blade could lose its temper. But with this flapper wheel, it keeps it nice and cool. So after you've sharpened both sides of the blade, I'll just pull it out of the jig. What I like to do, probably not absolutely necessary, but clean up the burr that might be on the back side of the blade. Without taking any material off, you just want to knock that burr off. And finally, I like to balance the blades. Guys, you can get these plastic cone balancers, like five, seven dollars at the hardware store. Just gonna find the, find the center point there. As you can see, that one is perfectly balanced. Uh, what I would do if they're a little bit off, I would go ahead and take my grinder and grind the back side of, I guess you call it the wing here and usually just a little bit there will a little bit goes a long ways as far as balancing these blades guys you do want balanced blades your spindles will last longer a lot less vibration just work a lot better just to show everybody a, a better view of what kind of job this jig does you can see that it's the grind angle is perfect Makes a really nice edge. It's probably actually too sharp, but um, it should last a long time. Um, that's why another reason I do like the flapper wheel on my grinder. Uh, it doesn't get the blade edge quite as hot as like a grinding wheel would. I think you get it red hot, it's going to lose some temper. Um, this 36 grit flapper wheel. The blade never gets so hot that you can't touch it and it really removes the material quickly. So again, All-American Sharpener, best way to sharpen your blades if you don't want to spend four or $600 on a commercial blade sharpener. Uh, again, thank you to Richie from Plemons Lawn Care as well as All-American Sharpener um, for the giveaway and the donation to the giveaway. I really appreciate it. I want to make good use of it. Take care, guys.